أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما أمروا إلا ليعبدوا الله مخلصين له الدين حنفاء ويقيموا الصلاة ويؤتوا الزكاة وذلك دين القيمة the main sacred text in Islam is the Qur'an, which was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad 1400 years ago. It was revealed in installments by the angel Gabriel, and it took about 23 years before the whole Qur'an was revealed to the Prophet. And the Prophet would recite it as it was revealed to him. So to us, to Muslims, the Qur'an is not written by human, it's not uh, amended or commented on by the Prophet, it is simply a direct transmission from the Divine to us humans through angels, through the Prophet Muhammad. This is the British Library's oldest Quran manuscripts and one of the oldest Qurans in the world. It dates from the 8th century, about 150 years after the death of the Prophet. No Quran manuscript from this period has survived intact completely. But what we have here is one of the largest fragments, about two-thirds of the Quran text. For Muslims, the, the Qur'an is a way of life, so it sets down not only for us rules on how do we live our life and what is permissible for us, what is impermissible, but also just general advice as well on how we should live. It also tells stories of previous nations, uh, the story of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, and his mother Mary, and Moses, and Noah, so all these similar stories you'll find in the Bible, these narratives, it tells that the Qur'an tells those same stories, but they're told for, in a way, to remind us as as believers, as human beings, that not to fall short in our worship to God. So Qur'an is uh, far more than, than a sacred text. It actually is a blueprint for life. And it's, it's a historic document as well as a document uh, of philosophy, of law uh, and of uh, moral values. As Muslims, we were commanded to pray five times a day. Uh, the prayers are spread throughout the day and they follow the motion of the sun. So you have a prayer before sunrise, ends with sunrise. Uh, then you have a prayer at the zenith when the sun is at its highest point in the sky. You have a late afternoon prayer when the sun is coming down. Uh, then you have a sunset prayer when the sun is actually set. And then you have a nighttime prayer where it's gone completely dark. Uh, you can pray as much as you wanted to. You can pray all day long if you wanted to. But those are the five minimum prayers that we have to do, which are the, one of the pillars of Islam. So the Shahada is a declaration of faith, but also a declaration of belief in the unity of everything in the universe. So when we say, La ilaha illallah, there is no God but God, what we're saying is everything in creation is connected, everything is one, and that is really a very important uh, principle of Islam, the unity of everything in creation. This is the, one of the British Library's most beautifully decorated and ornamented Quran. And this was commissioned by Sultan Baybars at the beginning of the 14th century. It really is a magnificent piece of illumination, calligraphy, design. Islamic art essentially is beautifying the sacred text. That is to say, writing down the, the sacred text in a beautiful calligraphy and illuminating it. And it's very abstract. There's no human or animal representation. Zakat is the third pillar of Islam, and it is very, very important for Muslims all around the world. It's a tradition that was started by the Prophet Muhammad, uh, peace be upon him, 1400 years ago. In practical terms, Zakat aims to purify one's wealth and it's uh, devised so that the rich that are blessed with wealth are not holding on to the wealth and they're sharing that wealth with the less fortunate uh, in society. So we give charity uh, which is a percentage of wealth uh, or income once a year to the poor. So the Quran has very clearly directed the Muslims around the world on how zakat can be distributed and can be used. Amongst them are the poor and needy and spending in uh, the cause of God. And the cause of God can be striving uh, to understand the religion or um, in, in terms of development work and in terms of community engagement, community development. In recent history, 
we have seen the tragedy of Grenfell in 2017. So a lot of people gave zakat to Islamic Relief specifically for Grenfell tragedy and Islamic Relief administered zakat at home to help the survivors of the Grenfell tragedy. Taken from the rich and giving to the poor has been emphasized in the Quran. And there are many, many evidences in Quran and Hadith. Hadith is one of our sources of law uh, in Islam. So Hadith plays a huge role in, for us in terms of understanding the Quran, uh, because there's some verses in the Quran which are quite general. So we use the Hadith to uh, make those verses specific or to get uh, a better understanding of why those verses were revealed. But also for us as a source of law where we derive rulings, we pray five times a day, but the Qur'an doesn't tell us to pray five times a day. The Qur'an doesn't tell us how to do our prayer. This was uh, collated or uh, reported from what the early Muslims did and what the Prophet did. So that's why the hadith is really important. The fourth pillar is fasting the month of Ramadan. It's one month a year where we're required to abstain from food and drink from dawn till sunset. Uh, it's, it's a really a month of uh, detox, spiritual detox. So Muslims fast uh, during the month of Ramadan because they were commanded to by God. Um, in the Quran, God commands Muslims to fast in order to attain God consciousness. The relationship with Muslims and, uh, and the Quran is a very holy one during this blessed month of Ramadan. So many Muslims will attempt to complete the whole Quran in terms of its uh, reading. Fasting binds the Muslim community together through purely when we come to break our fast, we do, it, we do so through communal gatherings, whether it's in our local mosque or a community center or out here in the park, for instance. Islam is not a culture, it's a prism through which we look at our culture, our history, um, you know, our moral values. And uh, particularly in Britain, I think today, we will find that the Muslim community is so diverse in terms of the background, ethnic backgrounds of people, their cultural practices, languages. So yes, I think uh, to me, the beauty of Islam is the diversity of the Muslim community across the world.